Welcome to our lecture online. Well, when I read the follow-up question from the previous JE advanced exam question, I was a bit disappointed. I thought that they should have also asked, now that we're going to step up and step down the voltage, what will be the power dissipation now? But they didn't ask that. They, said, they asked something about the step up, step down transformer and winding ratios. Well, we'll get to that. I'll do that one on the next video. But let's do this one because it was so interesting. On the previous video, we realized that by not stepping up the voltage, by keeping it at 4,000 volts, we were losing 30% of the power. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the step-up, step-down method with the same cable, but we're going to use a 10 to 1 step-up. In other words, we're going to go from 4,000 volts to 40,000 volts. How will that change the amount of heat lost, the amount of uh, energy lost on transmission? Notice not part of the JE advanced test, but we'll throw it in just for the purpose of learning. This is very interesting. So now we realize that the voltage is equal to 40,000 volts. And again, we have power provided equation, and we have the power consumed equation. And of course, we have Ohm's law, I equals V over R, which when appropriately substituted in one of those two equations, you can get the other equation. Power provided is equal to the current times the voltage, and power consumed is equal to I square R. And then, of course, we need to find the resistance on the line, and the resistance is equal to the resistance per kilometer times the length of the line. So in this case, that would be 0 0.4 ohms per kilometer, and the length of the line is 20 kilometers, which means that we have a resistance of 8 ohms across the 20 kilometers on the cable. So first we're going to use the power provided to get the current again. So I is equal to P over V. Now in this case the power is still 600,000 watts, but the voltage is now 40,000 volts, which means that the current has dropped from 150 amps all the way down to 15 amps. Now we can see how much power we're actually losing on the line. So power consumed, P, is going to be 15 amps squared times 8 ohms. So 15 squared, that would be 225 amps squared times 8 ohms. And let's see here, that's, that's uh, 8 times 20, that's 16. That's uh, 18, that's 180, that's 1,800 watts. So instead of losing 180,000 watts, we're only losing 1,800 watts. And so the power dissipated, or the percent power dissipated, is equal to the 1,800 watts that we lose, divided by the 600,000 watts that we're providing to the customer, Two zeros go away, that's 0.3%. Uh, so we've dropped it down to just a fraction of the percent of the power that's being transported is being lost. Now we're only losing 1800 watts. That's essentially the amount of power needing for an electric space heater while you're transporting a total of 600,000 watts across the lines. Way better thing. So that's why high voltage lines are stepped up to such high voltages, in some cases near a million volts, to reduce the power loss to a bare minimum. That also makes them very dangerous, so you definitely never want to get anywhere near those high power lines because they can very easily electrocute you and kill you. It has done so with kids that have been too crazy to climb up those towers. They're inviting, they look neat to climb, but they're very dangerous to climb. You don't want to get anywhere near them. But again, a drop from 150 amps to 15 amps, that's a 10 to 1 drop in the current because we have a 10 to 1 increase in the voltage. Notice that voltage increases, current drops, but since we square it, that's a hundredfold decrease in the power consumed. So instead of 30%, all the way down to 0.3%. So that's why we do it. That's why we raise the voltage on those transmission lines. And even though it's not a part of the AE advanced test, I thought it was worthwhile showing, and that is how it's done.